everyone. A warm welcome to our CSR Talks, a series of conversations around the main CSR and DE&I initiatives that are carried out through companies across the world. Today's topic is how companies can ensure a fair workplace for all cultural diversity groups and backgrounds. I'm Lisa Dolan, SVP of Employee Engagement and Diversity, Equity and Inclusion at Teleperformance Group. I've been with Teleperformance since 2019 and know just how important it is that every employee feels welcome, included and in an environment where they can thrive and be their authentic self. This is critical to any organisation's success. Today, I'm delighted to say I'm joined by Rick Britt, VP of AI at Call Miner. Hi, Rick, and thanks for joining us. Thank you, Lisa, for having me, and, and it's been great to talk, talk to you about this. Absolutely. So we'll get started straight in there. Tell us a little bit about Call Miner and the role that you play with DE&I. Excellent. Yeah, we're a software company, so we're on the technical side of the world. Uh, we sell software that monitors phone conversations and interactions between people and analyzes them, turns them into data. So it allows organizations like Teleperformance to to understand what's happening inside the interactions, inside the, the, the operations that they have. My role here is I'm head of artificial intelligence um, and, and the kind of the machine learning practice of the company. That's a research role. So I'm a research scientist who lead a group of data scientists and research engineers. And our job here is to find the newest technologies and the newest ways to improve our software. Amazing. Additionally, I, I head up our DEI um, in, in a really cool way. I'm, I'm, I guess it would be termed an executive sponsor, but I don't want to make anyone think I'm, I'm making decisions for that group. We have an employee run organization here. My, my job is more to clear the hurdles at the executive level uh, on the executive team and be sure that we're focused on the right things and, and everything is moving forward from from the, the hurdles and impediments that companies can put in front of any initiative. And so I don't run the strategy of the group that's run by our people, but I, I help them kind of knock things out of the way. Perfect, that, that leads absolutely perfectly into, so what are coal miner doing around cultural diversity and inclusion in, in the workplace? It, it, you know, it's, it's a constant bit of work. Um, our, our, our DEIC, we call it, Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Council, uh, it consists of nine people. Um, that that group of people, as I mentioned, are not leaders in the organization, but people who are passionate about DEI. Um, it's a diverse group, as you would expect it to be. Those who naturally select into that group typically have passion for it. The, you know, at the at the beginning, and we're still in that phase. The, what what we're focused on is really the education of the organization on what DEI truly means. Um, it, it it's it seems so logical that we would all understand that you know people are diverse and and people need to be treated you know fairly and that they need to be included in things but it's really when it manifests in the workplace there's so many biases and so many ways that organizations are built and constructed and 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 the humans that that work in them bring those things from their childhood to that to that organization and so um we're focused on the education really teaching our organization a common framework a common foundation that we can all use to discuss these things so that's kind of thing one. The thing two is we're also working on those discussions and the safe places that need to exist. And a lot of these in companies are in ours as well, are ERGs, employee research groups that I'm sorry, not research, employee resource groups, I'm a research guy, employee resource groups where people can come together and talk about a variety of topics in a safe environment. Um, these are important moments because it allows us to unpack our own baggage. How am I? bringing something to this group and how, how do I how do we react to that? Because we think a lot of times about DEI being, how do I help someone? How do I in, empower someone? How do I lift someone up? That's really not the role in, in this world. It's more the role of supporting the individual in the way they need to be supported. Yeah. And it's a, it's a big mind shift change in our organization to switch over from the golden rule, treat other people as you wish to be treated, to this new rule that's more important is treat other people as they want to be treated. And so it's it's building out our organization to handle that and to grow and to change in a tech industry, which is very different than a lot of other companies. I've worked in operations and, and I, I'm, I guess I'm really interested, Lisa, from you in, in teleperformance, you're so big. You yeah. have so many people. I, I don't even know the number. It's probably like half, half a million people or 400, 420,000 people or something working in your company. How do you, we're small, right? We're 300 people. How do you ensure like, like a fair workplace in a diverse group across an almost countless number of countries. How do you how do you handle that? 
Yeah, so so very similar to you, but as you said, just on a bigger scale. So I think one of the things that we really understand is that everybody has taken a different journey in life and each individual's own success comes from the talents that they've got, the backgrounds they come from, the environments that they've been they've been brought up in and, and the values that they're taught as individuals as they grow up through childhood, through schooling and so on. And I think for us as teleperformance, being as large as we have, we have to take those those categories of diverse talent, skills, different perspectives, because if we don't take that, we won't create that right environment and that true sense of belonging. So what we try and do is, yes, we have to have a little bit more governance being 400,000 plus employees with a set of, of focus areas that we look at in terms of leadership and systems and culture and reputation in order to steer people, the leaders on the right path. But ultimately we're exactly the same. The employee resource groups are led by our people, for our people and to support our people. And exactly the same as what you've just said, the raising awareness, the education side of stuff is super, super critical. And creating that true sense of a safe, sp safe space and inclusion for all diversities is, is absolutely critical. And so if you take a person with a physical disability, for example, if they come and work at teleperformance, there's reasonable needs of accommodation that need to be put in place, different equipment, a different chair, a different place to sit, uh, lift, access to lifts or ramps. But actually, if you look at a person that's more with an invisible disability, like a neurodiverse condition, those physical triggers and signs are not easily, very often, easy to spot. So it's then changes for the, those individuals based on how we communicate with them, how we train them, how we make sure that they are not back-to-back -back meetings through an interactive world, because somebody with autism will become overwhelmed with that and absolutely will not be able to cope. So exactly as you said, it's treating each individual and giving people the ability to flourish and, and thrive in the workplace and partnering with our ERGs and what we do and creating more allies of those groups will help us raise that awareness and it will filter through the whole organisation across our countries. Excellent. Excellent. So next question for you then is you have you're smaller so you have a slightly different view it's a smaller group that that then helps support and as you said push things over the line with yourself how how do you balance the reactive and proactive educating of the groups but also how how are you tackling those unexpected circumstances what 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 are you doing to really drive that change yeah you know it's always in organizations, I suppose policies are the first place our mind goes. There, there is organizations, if you think of them as, as their own entities, have a, a variety of, of procedures and policies that make an organization run, right? And you get hired, you have to go through new hire training, and then you sign all your policies and procedures as a travel policy. And there's a, you know, a policy on, on how you reimburse expenses. All these things are written in a way. And so, you know, the, the first thing that, that we go through is we, we went through all the sort of policies and, and it led us to our hiring practices as well. Um, and also how we we broadcast ourselves to the world, our brand, and and we've taken that hard look at do we have an organization that truly reflects in a structural sense what we believe is is diversity, equity, and inclusion, and, and the definitions we have. And so, I, I guess the first thing we did is we kind of went we were beginning to go through and rewrite those, and not not a huge rewrite. We just you know looking at areas of them. So uh, when you're applying for a role, does it say male or female? And, and if so, then let, let's take a look at adding a third button on there, because now we don't have, you know, just just binary genders and, and we, people will identify in different ways. And so those are the simple ways to do it. But through the foundation of what we're creating and, and, and having those conversations, it actually begins to manifest itself in how we interact with each other. So within the myriad of meetings that exist in everybody's world or the, the scrums and in, in, a, in a tech sense, the scrums. You know, the, the way you get together and work in, in very collaborative groups in, in our world, it's looking at the diversity of those groups and thinking about who's in there. And not, not just diversity is people would put it out there, as you said, like, you know, someone is in a wheelchair and they have a, 
uh, and ethnicity that's that's very definable, but the intersections of those as well. So trying to, to look at the in intersectionality of, of, of the group that we have, you know, who's male, um, you know, who, who's, who's gay or perhaps a, a black female who's, who's, you know, you can just start adding up these these intersections. So, you know, taking a look at all of those, what we, we begin to realize when you look at the data, and this is micro data, not macro, right? So when you look at DEI, you look at each individual, you don't say we have 42% of this and 27% of that, but you don't break yourself down into this smaller area. Tech is hard to find diversity in because it's really easy to hire me. Mm -hmm. I, 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 you can look at me and probably figure out I'm a, you know, a cisgender white male executive. And so it's, it, there's a lot of me out there in this world. There's a lot of me. And, and, and you, but luckily this industry, especially led by the California companies have pushed hard on adding a lot more uh, diversity to this world. But when we hire and when we look for people, you have to be very careful. You have to follow that Rooney rule. Or you, if you're not familiar with that, the Rooney rule is, is a, a rule in, in, in pro sports that requires you to interview more people. And so you have to do that you have to look one, one time more. It's hard when our job market's moving as fast as it is. Um, but we're, we're, we're working hard on that and we're, we're focused on it. So it really comes down to, do you have the foundation? Because eventually something bizarre is going to happen. Something unexpected is going to happen. You're going to have that moment where there is a, uh, something in your company that happened or something that happens to your company that you've never dealt with before. Yeah. And dealing with that is very difficult if you don't have that foundation, if you don't have the diversity, if you can't bring it back to a group and say, what do we do with this? Because in the moment, what do you do with it? You've never seen it before. You don't know, right? You think of a horrific car accident. You just drove up on, what do you do? I'm not, I don't know how to respond to that, but I have to get out and help some people. And so yeah. you do the best you can, then you evaluate it afterwards. And, and so we, we focus a lot on that, on the center so that when the edges come up, we can deal with the edges more, more successfully, yeah. more successfully. Yeah. So, you, you guys are even more diverse than we are, right? We struggle for diversity. I know in the call center space, oftentimes you can find diversity very simply because uh, it, it's such, there's so many people that are brought into your organization. And, and from a culture, like in a background perspective, how, how do you guys stay proactive in your world versus reactive with the ERGs and the thing you mentioned and, and, and including all these cultural groups across geographies who maybe never meet each other? How do you guys <laughs> stay proactive in that space? Yeah, so we we absolutely recognise that our 80 plus countries are very different to each other and very different culturally. And and we love the fact that they are because with that brings diverse mix of thought, diverse mix of character. It, it brings everything. And that is where we say we are the United Cultures of Teleperformance. And it's a nice little phrase because we absolutely are. We have... We have people that work within within our uh, contact centers and across the world that are doctors, that are pilots, that have done other huge roles that come to work for us because they need a break from the role that they've been doing or they come to us for a career, which is something that predominantly and historically contact centers were and the BPO industry was never really seen as a as a career avenue but it absolutely is when you speak to our leaders they've worked the way up through the organization what we try and do within within teleperformance same exactly the same is focus on the middle bits and the stuff that filters around the edge we will then obviously be able to deal with it when it comes through but we're trying to limit the amount of those edges that come in so we do it in a two phased approach. So we have our continuous listening approaches where every day we're listening to our employees. They're telling us what support they need. They're telling us what programs they want us to put in place and what our HR and DEI teams can do to help support them, whether it be as an ally within that group or that they identify within that group. And then we then have, and, and we do have, then have our data, which we treat everybody as individuals, but with us being as huge as we are, we need to have a better understanding of our people demographics in country, because what that data then allows us to do is to get a really clear understanding that one country has a greater requirement for gender balance versus another that has, has a greater uh, requirement for LGBTQ+, plus, for example, but that company in that, that country that has the balance for gender, we can't legally, because of legal reasons, promote LGBTQ+, because it's illegal within that country, for example. And that then shifts between each of our uh, countries. 
But what we try and do is make sure we've got mechanisms in place that there's always that two-way communication. There's programs and activities that are being designed with partners, with vendors, with local communities that everybody can get involved in should they want to. And we also have our global ethics hotline. So all our teleperformers know they can contact if they feel that there's any ethic concerns or anything they need to raise or any of those outside areas, as you said, that they need to make us aware of. And they immediately come through to the to the global DEI um, board members and some key ones within there in order for us to tackle that. And then we then put measures in place to make sure that that incident or that situation doesn't then happen again. Um, we want to continue to raise awareness across all of our groups and it, it becomes difficult, but it's also something that's absolutely paramount uh, and a priority for us, obviously, at Teleperformance. So we can use everybody in order to do that. Wonderful. Well, I think we've probably come to, to the end of, of our time together for this instance, Rick. Um, so thank you so much for taking the time to meet with us today and to talk through uh, what we're both doing from a diversity, equity and inclusion point of view. It's been an absolute pleasure, Rick. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, Lisa. And thanks everyone who, who joined us for this, this broadcast. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Take care.